Hey guys, this is Maliha from the Site Blogger, and today is a quick tutorial about Canvas guides and rulers. So, uh, those of you who are used to designing in Adobe InDesign, for example, you know that when designing something, it's really useful to have grids and rulers, um, and other. Uh, other platforms, other uh, design studios as well, I'm assuming. But since personally, I have used Adobe InDesign a lot in the past, designing layouts and magazines and whatnot, um, I uh, often used to miss those features of having grids and rulers when designing in Canva, especially in documents. So for example, if I create a US letter document, maybe I'm trying to design a magazine or something, and um, so creating a design in the glow up is um, on the left, as you just saw, and then um, you can start uh, typing what you're looking for in the search bar, like so, and then you can find the appropriate design. Um, and so I, you will click that, and that opens up a US letter design. And um, let's say that I'm trying to have, I'm trying to visualize the margins and whatnot. Now, one of the cool things about Canva is that when you start adding stuff, it kind of guides you, it automatically kind of guides you through um, things. So for example, if I want to add an element or an image or whatever, let's say I'm trying to add this image. And once I start moving this image around, some guides pop up automatically. So if I zoom in, just to show you what I mean, when I start moving them, as you can see, like here, the midpoint showed up automatically and the margins as well, the side, um, the left and right and top and bottom margins as well as the midpoint. So um, that's what happens when you, uh, when you start designing on Canva. So certain guides show up automatically. So if I add another image, for example, um, guides will show up again and relative to the other elements. For example, um, when it aligns with the other image, there's like a dotted line that shows up. And if I add another, one and let's say I want to add them um, equal distance from one another. Guides show up again, showing me, you know, when they are equally um, distance from each other. So those are some of the cool things that Canva already has that helps you um, making better design choices. But you can also add certain guides and rulers. So to do that, if you're not seeing it already, it means that you have to add them. So you go to File, and under Files, click Settings. And when you hover over Settings, you will see things like Show Rulers and Guides, Add Guides, Show Margins, Show Print Bleed, um, High Comments, and other stuff. But the thing that we are interested in today, are, they are rulers and guides and margins, maybe. So. Um, and bleed too. So if you're working with um, a design that's going to be printed by a professional printer, not your home printer, then um, your professional printer may have certain bleed requirements. So let's go over them one at a time. So the first one is show rulers and guides. If I click that, as you can see, it just added, you know, uh, rulers on the left and uh, on the top as well. So let's get rid of the left panel so we have more room to work with. And so rulers can help you, you know, kind of visualize how you're designing things, you know, where um, you're adding elements and um, compared to, you know, um, your page and the size of the page. Uh, where things are appearing. And the other cool thing about ruler is that you can click on the ruler, on the top ruler or the left hand side ruler, click it, hold it, left click, hold, and then kind of drag your mouse to add some guides. So you can add like a guide to that aligns with the left margin and then it will just stay there. And then you can do the same with the top 
and when it aligns with the top margin, you will see the magenta line pop up. And that way, you know, you can kind of add some visual guides to help you design better, like so. And you can add another one at the midpoint. And the purple line turns magenta as soon as, you know, it, it aligns with something like a midpoint or a, a margin, for example. Like so. And you can continue doing that. Like you can add one in the midpoint of these two lines. And this is not going to turn magenta because it's not like a midpoint midpoint. It's just a midpoint of two other guides. So you kind of have to, you can use the ruler to kind of eyeball um, that midpoint. And you can do the same with this one as well. And these guides will help you create a better design where you can place your elements and text boxes or whatever you're adding um, to just kind of help you uh, make it make things as close to pixel perfect as possible. And then uh, if you want to get rid of, if you don't want to, um, if you don't want to see these guides and, you know, one thing you can do is just hold it, hold, click on top of any of the guides you just added, hold it and just bring it back up or um, just click it and then hit the delete button on your keyword. Actually, no, that doesn't work. Sorry, my bad. You cannot hit the delete key and then get rid of a guide. But what you can do is, um, like I said, you can just bring it back up top or on the side, um, like so, and that will get rid of it. Or you can click File again, and then under Setting, you can click Clear Guides, and that will get rid of all the guides you have added. Just Make sure that you know that's what you really want because you have, if you have added a lot of guides, um, and then if you hit clear guides, then it will get rid of all of the guides. So if it's just like you know one individual guide that you want to delete, it's better to just click it and drag it top, up top or on the side to get rid of it. That's a better uh, alternative to removing individual guides as opposed to all of them. And then if you click, if you go to file settings, and once you have some guides, you can see some other options as well. So you can uh, do add guides. And when you do that, it automatically adds some guides um, based on what people typically use. So Canva has um, some guidelines, some guides built into it. And as you can see, uh, as soon as you hit add guide, it added some other options. So the default is the 12 column. And then it's also showing me that you can have three columns, you can have three by three guide, or you can even create custom guides. So you know, you can specify how many columns you want. So maybe you only want four columns. Um, and then maybe you have specific gap in mind, maybe you just want uh, 0.1 inch as opposed to 1.4, or maybe you want 0 0.2 inches. Um, maybe you want margin to be one inch, you know, um, maybe you want uh, six rows, and then you can add guides and that should work. And then if you don't like something, you can go to file settings and then clear guides again to get rid of all guides. Or you can also lock guides. So because here's the thing. Um, you can accidentally click on any of the guides and, you know, change them. Um, not these ones, not when you add guides based on um, the add guide feature. Um, but if you add a guide, um, a custom guide, like I showed you previously, then you can log those guides. These are automatically locked, uh, appears to be. Um, so let me go to file again, settings, and then clear guide and show you what the lock feature does. You can add a guide, um, custom guide, like so. And then you can go to File, Settings, 
lock guide and then it locks it and you cannot really move it and if you want to move it move the guides then you can go to file settings and then click lock guides again to unlock the guides and that should allow you to move the guides again Let's see, what is the other one? Show margins. That just shows the margin. And it's a dotted line, so it may be hard to see, but there's this light gray dotted line. Um, and if you don't want to show margin, just go to settings again, and then hit show margins again. That gets rid of it. And the last one is show print bleed. So if you click that, it actually added a little extra space and you might want that um, if you're working with professional printers because those have the bleed problem. Um, usually the way to work with bleed is that whenever you add a bleed and when you add designs, specifically images for example, you should extend them to the bleed so that um, when um, people are printing, there's no awkward white spaces, unless you want that. Um, but typically, the bleed is um, kind of like a area of error, if you can think about it like that. So um, bleed specifications are actually dependent on the printer you're working with. So it's best to kind of talk to the printer you're working with and ask them about the bleed and how to work with bleeds. Um, but yeah, those are some of the guides and bleeds and margin options that are available to you. Guides are extremely helpful uh, when you're designing things, any graphics, to be honest with you, but specifically if you're designing complex uh, print ready things like uh, books or magazines and things like that on Canva, um, then guides are extremely helpful. They can help you um, design things as close to pixel perfect as possible. Now, obviously Canva is not Illustrator or InDesign. Um, it's a lot easier to make things pixel perfect on those platforms or on those design studios, but um, on Canva, using the guide, you can get as close as possible. So I just wanted to show you quickly. Um, and that's it for today's video. Feel free to play around with bleeds and guides and just to kind of, you know, get a hang of how these things work. Um, once you start using them, I, I promise you that you will be using them more and more because they make your design so much better um, and so much easier too to just to work with um, complex things. And that's it for today's video. I will see you with a different one sometime soon. Bye.